I'm a college student and I'm a first generation American with Colombian roots. Um, and thanks to my mom, and thanks to my family, I've been able to grow up in the United States and have many, many great opportunities that I wouldn't have had otherwise. The motto she would always say to me is, reach for the moon, even if you miss, you'll land among the stars. And I really have taken that to heart um, and tried to take every single opportunity um, that I can in life. Education has always been a number one for me. And it's not all about looks or beauty. It's, it's about the brains too. You gotta know what's going on in the world and you have to get your education. When it comes to beauty, I really love uh, companies that kind of show women for who they really are. We perpetuate that stigma that all women have to look thin and white and light skin. And it's really not true. You know, we have beautiful women of all shapes and sizes. And we have to show that that's what we want to see in our advertising. I want to empower young women, young Latinas, and show them that anything is possible, that, that our society in terms of race, ethnicity, gender, that everything is changing and that really there shouldn't be anybody telling you that you can't do something because of who you are. I'm a woman, I'm a millennial Latina, I am educated, and I am ready to change the world. I'm a conscious consumer. Yo soy única y yo soy importante who is CEO and founder of Bowdoin PR. Can you raise your hand? I don't know if I can, they can see you? Okay. And she's gonna really talk about kind of how brands are looking at Latinas, but also how we see ourselves when it comes to brands. We have Lily Garcia. She is Senior Vice President, I'm sorry, um, <laughs> Vice President of Human Resources and Deputy General Counsel at Strayer University, and she teaches and studies on leadership and management. So she's going to talk about how Latinas fit into the different leadership models and what we're doing really, really well. We have Monica Hill, Senior Vice President and General Manager of Multicultural Growth and Strategy at Nielsen. Ah, oh, she's got some fans in the room. <laughs> and she's really going to talk about this research different research reports that are coming out and really ground us in where we are right now. We have Dan Cody, Director of Digital Operations at Latina Media Ventures, also known as the publisher of Latina Magazine. And he's really going to talk about what has happened to the vision of Latinas and how Latinas are seen in media over the last 20 years and then where he sees us going in the future. And we have Janina Nunez, Manager of External Communications at McDonald's USA, and she's going to give us the perspective of a brand. So just to contextualize for just a minute, yes, we, we know that Latinas still have a lot of challenges, and yet we have done some amazing things. We've come a really, really long way. And so we're going to contextualize this discussion, both in where we are today, but also envisioning, looking forward, what do we see as the future for Latinas? Where do we want that to go? Where do we see it headed? And that might be in the context of meeting some of those challenges. And I also want to encourage our panelists to really share a little bit about their personal stories. And we're going to ask them a little bit about that a little, a little later. So Monica, do you want to start and talk about the research that Nielsen has put together, what it means for us and what we're seeing? Sure. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Um, you know, if you ever want to see the power of Latinas, it's when we drive Carlos Vives out of here without any uh, circumstances. So we're able to do that. If um, There's so much data out there. And if we can put that first slide up, I think Many of you have seen the Latina Power Shift Report, and I do encourage everybody to please download it to get more information. It's at nielsen.com under reports. So the key takeaways for this report are truly indicating that if there's ever been a better time to be Latina in the country, it is now. Latinas, we're in the driver's seat. We are the key to growth of the female population in the United States. So if you just take a look at all the female population in the United States, currently, one of the findings that you'll see is that Latinas are 17% of the population as it stands right now. By the year 2060, Latinas are gonna make up 30% of that population. Put it another way, Latinas are increasing productivity for all consumer categories in every aspect. And I think one of the key things you need to think about this growth population specifically is that we're at a stage right now because we tend to be younger than most of the population that Latinas 74% of the Latinas are currently under the age of 45. 
In California today, 822 children will be two born to a Latina. That's 34 every hour, one every two minutes. 131 born in the United States. What does that mean for you and for marketers? It means that we are in acquisition mode for an array of products, and we're going to fuel consumption for brands of all sorts in all areas. Um, in the data, one of the things that became very clear, and I know we have little time to talk about it, but there's three points I want to give away. That the economic power of Latinas is growing and it's fast. If you look at the slide on the screen, one of the things that you're going to see is that we're increasingly becoming the breadwinners in the United States in the Latino households. Traditionally, males were seen as the, the people who were going to bring the money in. What we're seeing is a shift. Latinas are actually now increasing their income. And in fact, Latina households are indicating that they are now, I'm sorry, 21% of Latinas over the age of 18 indicated that their income in their household is over $75,000. We're seeing an increase in that. Part of the reason for that is also our levels of edu education are increasing. Record high, seven out of 10 Latinas are applying and enrolling in college. That's 1% higher than the total female population. And our Latino men, we still got to work on it a little bit. Wait, wait, wait. I, I'm not sure people caught that. Can you just say that number again? Because when I read the report and I heard that number, that Latinas are enrolling in college at a higher rate than white women, that really kind of blew me away. 1% higher than white women are enrolling. This is important because we're really showing that our Latinas are shifting from the traditional roles that we're expected to behave, right? And traditionally, many of us grew up where our parents perhaps didn't encourage us to go to college, or in my case, they didn't want me to go away from home, which was an hour away. But at the end of the day, what you're really seeing is that we're embracing educational attainment, we're making more income. And I think that if you take away anything from this entire report, is that Latinas are innately ambicultural. And what does that mean? It means that we're seamlessly able to transcend between cultures without even thinking about it. We're able to pivot from English to Spanish to Spanglish, and we do it without any hesitation. So what you're seeing is a very healthy inclination for Latinas to embrace and retain their cultural heritage. And if you're a brand to be trying to market to this Latina, you have to figure out when we tend to shop more or less Latina and under what circumstance. And I think if anything on the report is pivotal to increasing growth, this is it. Latinas, we are now in a position where we are no longer just about incremental growth for a company. It's truly about we are in a position of significant influence because we tend to be younger. We're buying a lot of products. From an economic side, we're tending to, uh, to, to put most of our money now, when we have extra money, we put it in the savings. We are more likely than other females in the United States to make a big ticket purchase item from an auto to a home to a home improvement. So companies, if they're truly trying to grow their business, we are now in a position where it's no longer a nice to have, it's a must do. And I think if you really start paying attention to how we connect ourselves as well and how we do this, is we're doing it through the digital aspect right now. Look at me right now. I got my phone for work, my personal, I got my iPad for the plane, and I got my Mac Air to look trendy. So at the end of the day, one of the things is that I'm becoming digitally connected, oh, you have it too. and we're doing this, we're, we're doing this because one of the things that we are trying to express ourselves is make ourselves, we're cultivating our own uh, digital persona. We're making sure that we're connecting to our families at home and that we are being super moms, that we're connecting professionally at work, and we're doing this in two languages and three if you count Spanglish. So we're gonna, so we're just gonna let each of the panelists give a little bit of a foundation, and I'm gonna ask them very direct questions, and then we're gonna launch into a little bit more of a discussion, just so you kind of know where we're going. So we've looked at a little bit of the um, research and statistics when it comes to the market. Lily, I want you to talk to the audience about what you're seeing in academia, right? So you were a former Washington Post columnist for the employee questions, and now you're teaching in management and leadership. So what are you seeing for Latinas on the academic side and for our employees that are asking questions and informing your research? You know, I really enjoyed this Nielsen study because it sort of it catalyzed for me, as it might have for you, all of these things that I already understood 
uh, emotionally, anecdotally about my own life. You know, this whole notion that we operate in an ambicultural fashion, that's a, I mean, that's a new term for me, right? But that, that actually defines what I've been trying to do, what I've been grasping for all of these years. And if you go to the Nielsen study and you read a little bit deeper, you'll see that not only are we ambicultural, but those of us who would tend to identify more with the Latino side or with the American side want to gravitate toward the middle. So we all want to be fully ambicultural. And it's that as, as far as my personal story is concerned, that really resonated with me. And how that translates into the workplace is that we Latinas have an unbelievable amount of cultural dexterity. So it's not only multicultural awareness, the ability to embrace multicultural people in the workplace, the ability to value that and to capitalize upon that, but we, can, we, have, um, we have the cultural know-how to be able to navigate the sometimes difficult political situations you would encounter in a corporate environment. So all of that bodes very well for our ability to succeed in that environment. And if I, if I turn now to the things that I teach as a professor of people management for the Jack Welch Management Institute, there are five things that Jack Welch always looked for in people when he was at General Electric. And the first thing was to be, uh, to be energetic, to really have a sense of passion for what you do, to get up in the morning ready to take on the world, right? So energetic. It's something that I, that I find that we Latinas Im really embody because of our cultural origins. The second is energizing, the ability to really inspire other people who report to you, who might work for you, uh, who you might influence in the organization into action. Again, something I think where we have a really strong foothold. Uh, the, the other quality is to execute, to be able to make difficult yes or no decisions, sometimes with limited information. Now this is an area where many, many leaders struggle, but I think because of the, the matriarchal nature of our culture, we're accustomed to doing this, right? We're accustomed to doing it all, we're accustomed to juggling multiple responsibilities, and we're accustomed to making difficult yes or no decisions on the fly. So that, that, again, is an area where we really um, have an advantage. And uh, we also, uh, the, the fourth quality is, is P, which is for passion. And, and passion means uh, really resonating with what you do, having a sense of personal connection to your work, having a sense of personal investment in what you do, and being able to convey that and bring that energy into work every day. And it's also an area where we excel. So as I, as I look across um, the board, and I, I'm looking here for my fourth E, my, oh, edge. Um, edge. Edge is the ability, um, edge and execution go hand in hand. So um, ex ex execution, the ability to make tough yes or no decisions, but to do it with edge, with, uh, with the, the ability to do this without necessarily having all the information at, at your disposal. So as I look across the, the landscape and I look at, our, at Latina's prospects in corporate America, I feel very positive about it, but this is not to say that you should rest in your laurels. It's very important to be very deliberate about this, to, to recognize the, the cultural gifts that you might have been given because of your upbringing, the, um, the unique position that we find ourselves in now in the history of this, of this um, country, but, but also to, to really analyze the qualities that you need to be able to succeed in corporate America, and specifically those five that I mentioned to you, and be very de deliberate about it, be very aware of how it is that you exercise those qualities as you move forward, so that you hone them, so that you use them to your maximum advantage. So we've talked about the research, and we've talked about a little bit of the studies in academia, and I know, Natalie, you work with a number of different brands, and getting them to tell a story with a Latina audience. And I think you wanted to sh us to show a brief video. So Should I do the video? Can you know, pause for a second? Okay. So <clears throat> in terms, I think what Monica and our fellow panelists are, are talking about today is really, really important. And from a brand perspective and from really a, a girl and women perspective, we really think that the time for Latina is today, just like Monica mentioned. But the Latina goes through a lot of struggles, and the woman and the girl goes through a lot of struggles in terms of stereotypes, and especially stereotypes that are bombarded at us every day through advertising. And I think some of the, the brands that have done a wonderful job, Dove, Pantene, to really start looking at the winds of change that are around us, that it's okay 
to talk about um, the body and how to accept yourself with a certain, you know, doesn't matter who you are, you are beautiful. And I think some brands heard those winds of change and adapted their advertising and their, their marketing communications to it. So before we start off, we just have two or three slides, little snippets. Um, we wanted to show you a little bit of what we think is the history of the power of the Latina in a very short video and a short slide. Um, Do you want me to play now? Yep. And so if you could. Why are Hispanic children so well behaved? The secret is the Hispanic culture, which emphasizes boundaries, developmental growth, and a traditional technique known as la chancla. For centuries, the secret of La Chancla has helped millions of Latina moms focus attention to each child's unique needs, instill values of fairness and fair play, encourage healthy eating habits, learn the discipline required to excel in academics, moral reasoning, La Chancla can help every parent master a truly hands-off parenting style. Ah, La yeah, round of applause to Mundo for putting that together. <laughs> the, the power of the Latina has gone, we like to say, from La Chancla to Twitter. And Twitter being everything that has to do with social. She doesn't or we don't need that chancleta anymore to, to, to show how, how powerful we are from a, from a purchasing power perspective, from an economic perspective, from a political perspective. We have something called social media. And if we go to our next, um, the next series that we wanted to, we wanted to, you know, Latinas can build and destroy a reputation at the drop of a tweet. And I think that's where, where brands suddenly realize very, very good care of them because it doesn't matter where they are, they'll be able to influence, um, influence each other, influence the general market, and have a big crossover effect to everyone. The second thing we like to say is, and this is for all the fellow, our fellow blogueras out there, you've got a powerful, a, a powerful platform now in the form of bloggers, and we work with our brands, of course, for you know, mom bloggers, fashion bloggers, et cetera. The bloguera today is, and we like, we, they're not journalists, they are entrepreneurs. They are publishers, they, are, they, are, they look for stories, and this is one of the biggest, biggest platforms um, that we look at with brands in terms of leveraging their, their power. And lastly, we like to say, we're feminists at the core, <clears throat> as you can see, um, feminists in all the good sense of the term. So not content is king, content is queen. And, um, pobrecito Dan, you're his first. <laughs> <laughs> I, I live in a women's, women's world, so. <laughs> and I like it. <laughs> you know, content is queen, I mean, the, the, that video was beautiful, the Nielsen video, because it really did encompass the fact that the kind of content that Latinas are consuming today, they want to hear more about, less about, I have curves, and I wear red lipstick, and I give birth to millions and millions of children all at once. <clears throat> we want to hear other things about our, our careers and, and how we, un aplauso para eso. We don't want to, um, too many of, of, of those, but there's some stereotypes that are still out there and that when you see, you're frightened to see when, the, when you hear the brand saying that the Latina is X, Y, and Z when really she isn't. Um, so yeah, that, that, those, are our, those are, and I think our main, um, our main uh, message is that she is, she's such an important part in terms of the growth of this country that if you talk to her in a different voice and in a different way, it's not a risk. It's not a risk. Um, they, she's actually welcoming the new content, the new way that brands are talking to her. Janina, from the perspective yeah. of the brand that you are currently representing, McDonald's, can you talk to us about how they are both reaching out to and viewing Latinas? You know, it's interesting. I think even in the, 
even if I look at just kind of like a small two-year two window trajectory, I, the trajectory, I see the evolution of the way that we've positioned our efforts as a brand and really still trying to navigate the landscape that has exploded, literally exploded. Um, and it's a really exciting place to be in because the opportunities are endless. So it's moving from a, a space of talking at an audience to creating advocates and to really empower. So I, I think that it makes, it makes my job really interesting because part of what we're spending a lot of time doing is you know, focusing on the brand building initiatives and less on windows or products or initiatives. It's much more about forming alliances and looking at that from a long-term perspective and how that's gonna help carry the, the, the future consumer that's gonna decide whether they step into our restaurant or anywhere else. So it's an interesting, it's an interesting and challenging space, but you realize there are multiple mediums in which you do it. So even down to the medium and the platform in which you choose is, is critical. So I know that now, you know, having conversations with, you know, even if I'm looking at different platforms at different levels of research, it's all about, you know, is this an Instagram? Is this a Snap? Is this a Vine? Is this a, is this a blog? It's, it's you looking at all the different mediums to make sure that you're staying relevant and engaged with the segment. Um, I think it's, it's, uh, it's not only fascinating, but it allows us to really make some groundbreaking impact. So I know that from, from a brand perspective, and, and when I speak specifically to what I do for, for Brand McDonald, we are really just kind of scrapping everything that has once been the foundation for how we build a program and really kind of creating the building blocks to creating meaningful engagement conversations because that's the advocacy we need because that's going to continue to not only drive people to influence and be inspired by your brand, but want to continue to maintain a sense of loyalty, which is ultimately what we want to work towards. So, I mean, it's an imperfect process, but I think that it's a beautiful process because it allows us to really create new conversations all over again in, in ways that are going to continue to drive um, ultimate, ultimate inspiration and heart for, for my brand. So Dan, Janina just set you up really nicely, right? She's talking about how you engage with a particular customer, how you do it in a way that's meaningful. And you work for Latina Magazine, a publication that's been out nearly two decades. How has it changed? How are, how are we talked to you know, when the magazine came out versus what do you see now and where do you see it going forward? Yeah, I mean, I think you know, even if you look back to Latina, 18 years ago when you know we were founded, we were founded out of passion by Christy Halbegger and she didn't see herself represented in media anywhere. And nowadays, you do see yourselves represented in media. I mean, there has just been ex an explosion of um, you know, not only publications geared at Latinos, but verticals geared at Latinos. And um, you know, I think that today, you know, we have so many different options out there. Um, in terms of, you know, media. Um, I think the way that the approach has changed for us over the years, um, you know, we're constantly um, evolving, uh, this, we're constantly following this evolving reader. And, you know, we have to look at every aspect of her life through a bicultural lens right now. Um, I like ambicultural too, I've never heard that before, but I'm gonna start using it. <laughs> um, and I think that, um, you know, one of the big things, obviously, that changed for us was language. You know, we started out, you know, 18 years ago, and we had um, the magazine published in English and Spanish. Um, you know, in 2005, we stopped that. We saw that, you know, our reader wanted to consume their media in English. So we are English first, um, you know, but it's, it's this idea of Spanglish almost as a written language, too where um, if it makes sense, if it's culturally relevant, it's in there. Um, but it's not forced, it's not, it's not shoved down your throat. Um, so I think that you know, that's one obvious, really big change. Um, you know, our, at Latina, our big, you know, uh, our, 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 the big way that we uh, tried to um, speak to our reader is to empower and inspire them. Um, to feature culturally relevant content um, and to tell her what's cool, what's hip. You know, she's already in the know, so she needs to be even more in the know from us, of all people. Um, and I think that when that reader is living in, in both worlds, you really have to be willing to show her, you know, not only culturally relevant 
content, but content that is pop culture centric. So we don't only focus on Latino celebrities. We did that for a long time, um, but our reader cares about Rihanna just as much as they care about Selena Gomez, as much as they care you know, about the JLo's of the world. And I think that that's important. Um, she, she doesn't just go to our website or pick up our magazine because Eva Longoria is on it. Um, she follows all of these celebrities and you know, she's constantly tweeting about Justin Bieber just as much as um, you know, she's, she's um, supporting people like Eva Longoria. So I think that that's also important. We had to start to talk to her about the pop culture world a lot more. Um, and I think just in terms of you know, digital, obviously, um, you know, the, the multiple platform, um, 50 devices is, is a big thing for us. So, you know, we're not just creating content for a print magazine anymore. We have, you know, we have the print publication, um, specific content goes there, but we're also creating content for every platform. We create content for social. We create content for our app. We create content that's uh, meant to be um, seen on mobile. And, and we do that, we go, in, we go into our content meetings and that's how we're strategizing. Like, this would be good on the app, this would be a good social app, this would be a great story for mobile. Um, and that's how we're thinking about content now. And I think that that's been a big change as the digital landscape you know, has, has, um, has really taken over all of our lives. <laughs> um, even down to our cover selection right now, we, you know, we think about a lot the, the social implications of a cover and how it's gonna create buzz or how we can create buzz about it or how we can distribute that cover and who's gonna care about it. You know, again, people care about Zoe Saldana outside of Latina. So, you know, we are targeting this, you know, the Star Trek fan groups and we're trying to be everywhere that the fans are and that Latinas are because Latinas are everywhere. Um, so I think that that's kind of uh, a couple of the ways that we've really evolved our business. Um, and, and, and the last thing I would say is probably that we're thinking now digital first. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar, but we launched a standalone uh, publication called The Latin Kitchen. It focuses on Latin cuisine. Um, and that's a digital publication. It doesn't have a print component to it. Um, so, you know, it's very, it was very important for us because we knew Latinos were online and consuming content, you know, in mobile and on apps that we wanted to be there. We wanted to be on digital first and we wanted to prove the model on digital first. Um, and I think that that's something that you've started to see a lot of media companies uh, start to do. So I hope you guys were really listening because I, I heard a lot of real gems in there, right, with regard to how Latinas are actually behaving right now in corporate settings, to how brands are engaging, to how the media is engaging with us, but also portraying us and thinking about us, um, how, like, how brands connect with us in general, and then all of this based on some really interesting research. And I really would encourage you all to download that report and take a look at it in its entirety and read it cover to cover. It's, it's really fascinating. Um, we've only got about 15 minutes left. I want to have a little bit more of a discussion. Natalie, I know you wanted to make a couple more points, and then what I want to do is have you guys engage a little bit with each other in the different points that you brought up. But do you want to? Yeah. We're, in terms of, and I think it's a good segue from Latina Magazine um, and from what Dan just said, Latinas are as multifaceted as the media they follow. And having said that, the, one of the biggest opportunities for brands um, we were doing a brainstorming the other day, and we were trying to figure out in terms of, you know how we work in public relations where we develop a story and then we'll try and, and, and look at all the publications to see where that story would make sense. And we said, no existe. No, it, it, the media we were going after didn't exist, but we have the story. So we said, well, let's just, let's develop it. I think owned media then becomes extremely important so what kind of the media that you actually own as a brand, you can, it can become its own, not to compete with, with Latina Magazine, it can become its own media outlet. And I think that's one of the, the neatest things that is happening right now. All the new Latina publications that exist out there are an example of that. Um, and the, the other one, the, there, for us, it's really important. Every time we talk to our brands, we say, listen, all Latinas are entrepreneurs. We've got to stop looking at them as the stay-at-home mom versus 
the woman that goes out and works, and, and there, that conversation happens all over the world. Um, they're all, we're all entrepreneurs. We all, whether we're managing a household and we're managing a, a payroll in the household or managing the children or cooking or what have you, it's very important that the brands communicate that they understand us in, in everything that, that we do. Y por último, creo que había... And, yeah, and, and, and lastly, we, we always like to say that it's not about marketing to her. It's about investing in her, investing in what she wants, investing in what her children want, what she wants for her kids, what she wants for herself. Um, it's much more important than for her to be getting a sales, um, a sales message. So thanks, Aurelia, for giving me that. Yeah, I mean, Monica, I think you had said something really profound the other day when we were kind of preparing our remarks, and you were talking about authenticity in this realm and what, what that means for Latinas and how, how important it is, both for us as individuals and then also for, for brands and marketers. Can you talk about that? Sure, and I think the whole concept of ambicultural really ties to this authenticity. If you think about the Latina population, I like to call ourselves the 200% population. We're 100% Latina, 100% American. <laughs> yes. And, and, and why is this important? Because one of the things that I have found in corporate America or with any brands, we have to be adamantly authentic. And we have to be completely able to demonstrate uh, that value to a company. Because when you bring value, I guarantee you, revenue will follow. Um, and I like to say that I'm adamantly authentic and audaciously assured. The reason I say that is because when I go into a meeting and what I have found in all the data, what it's demonstrating is that every company in the, world, in the country right now is trying to figure us out. We are the most coveted demographic in the nation. You heard the numbers, our growth numbers here in terms of population, in terms of our economic, someone mentioned businesses. Latinos are growing businesses twice as fast as the general population. We're growing it at 46% versus the general population at 20%. Think about what that statement is making. We are going to fuel their growth in almost every single category. So they don't know about us. And one of the things that we have to do is we have to teach them how unique we are. We have to teach them about our moms. We have to teach them about multi-generational multi households. If you look at our households and how we function and how companies target you, so whether it's be television, you know, 1834, if you're in that age bracket, boy, they're gonna be reaching out to you. Um, under 45, I'm still there for another couple of years, keep it. Um, they they want to know whether we dance salsa or we eat it, whether we rode in on a burrito or ate one. I guarantee you that this information is valuable to them, but they don't know. And I used to tell my researchers when I first came into Nielsen, you can tell me how many tamale leaves we sell um, during Christmas time, but you can't tell me the flavoring, you can't tell me the sauce, and you can't tell me how to make them. And that's what companies know. They know the population. They know the numbers, 55 million strong. They want to know the how and the why. And that is why authenticity is critical to everything that we do. Companies will pay for it. You got to demand it, and you have to be assured. So we're talking about research from the outside in, right? You're, you're talking about kind of this really interesting research. Let's talk about the research from the inside out. So Lily, talk about what you're seeing. And one of the things you had said to me the other day was that Latinas in positions of power, so we're talking about executives, like all of us, are actually seen as more palatable than other women, perhaps. Talk about that. that was, I thought that was really interesting. Sure, I'll get to that. Uh, sure, But it, before we get to that, if I think uh, the panels could share their Twitter handles. Looks like a lot of people are tweeting ah, out here in the audience. That's right. I'm at the work expert and also at Strayer U, and I just wanted to give you a chance. Sure. At Dan Cote and at Latina. And at Natalie Bowden. At Natalie Bowden. At Janina, J E N I N A, 11207. At Nielsen Knows, N I E L S E N K N O W S. Thank you Wonderful. for indulging me. <laughs> so just. Um, Thank you, Lily. I'll, I'll, I will answer your question, but um, piggybacking on what, um, what you said a minute ago, authenticity is, is such a critical word for me as I approach this subject from both a human resources standpoint and the standpoint of an educator in an executive MBA program. It is really important that you be authentic. Um, it is, we, we are, in a sense, undefinable, but, but we do share common traits. And those common traits that I outlined earlier 
are the source of our strength in a workplace. And when you, when you say um, Latinas are, as executives, are, can be somewhat more palatable than your typical executive, I, I think the, the conversation that sprung from was one in which I was explaining that it is this, um, this, uh, this ability to operate multiculturally, this, uh, this sensitivity to community and innate ability to connect with community that, that makes us so dexterous in the workplace is part of what makes us better able to operate as executives. So, you know, everybody knows about the ban bossy campaign, right? So, mm -hmm. so rather than being perceived as bossy, I think Latinas are more frequently perceived as authoritative because we're, we are able to convey that sense of authority and that sense of knowledge and power in the workplace um, in a way that doesn't alienate other people. So that, that, is, that goes to the heart of why I think um, perhaps, you know, anecdotally, uh, Latinas really are able to excel as executives in the workplace um, in, in a way that perhaps other groups of women might not. And one of the other things you had talked about was just kind of, and I think all of you have talked about this, is the importance of relationality among Latinas and Latinos. So Janina, maybe you wanna talk about how your brand builds that relationship and I know Natalie and, and Dan, you might have something to add there too, kind of how you guys are doing that. Yeah, so, you know, it's, it's really interesting because I think that, that one of the things that is, that we're kind of understanding here with this evolving uh, landscape is that we cannot just, it's kind of, and I mentioned this earlier, it's just kind of like a talk at kind of situation. So we t I know that um, as, as, the, as my department and my company and, and as we look at our overall approach, we're really focusing on building that energy and that enthusiasm for the brand. So it starts all over again. It's something as simple as um, whether we extend um, you know, an engagement um, in our social media platform or we're hosting very small private intimate events to get to know to get to know some of our partners and, and bloggers and, and other folks that are really interested in us. We're looking at those small impact ways to kind of create those smaller conversations because that's where you get that one-on-one -on -one FaceTime, that's where you get that kind of engagement, that's where you get that kind of opportunity. So, so even, even places and environments that allow us to, to do that are really great groundwork to start to formulate that. Another thing is that we're trying to focus on very targeted initiatives. So for example, RMHC, I said, is a big initiative for Brand McDonald's focus on scholarships and education. So we work on, on focusing on an education-based platform, having a lot of those conversations. So really targeting those initiatives and those core platforms that are at the heart of our business and then really starting the conversation that way. There doesn't necessarily need to be anything going on to start to open up those dialogues of communication. And whether that's, um, and whether that's through, it doesn't really matter the medium, it's more of what the initiative is and then bridging the initiative with with those partners that would really kind of make sense. So we're looking for those connection and cultural touch points to really start to kind of build that foundational conversation. Um, at the end of the day, um, you know, I think with a brand like McDonald's, I think conversation will naturally follow, but it's always about starting to find those cultural touch points that allow us to scratch the surface beyond something promotional to open up a line of conversation. And Dan, if you could talk to that for just a minute and then I'm getting we're going to have to cut this really short. I apologize. But Dan, why don't you say something and then I'm going to let everybody have their one minute kind of closing remarks. Sure. Um, so, you know, I think just as a follow up on authenticity, one, one thing that we're trying to do um, is, you know, I see a room of very pretty put together Latinas. And I know that that is so ingrained in the culture from day one. <laughs> And, and I think, you know, as content creators, when we're creating, you know, when we're creating the editorial that you guys see, you know, in Latina, on the Latin Kitchen, on Latina.com, um, we're thinking about not just what's important to, um, not just what's important to uh, her from a cultural perspective, but we're thinking about her body type. And, and that, and, and for me, the, you know, what's important from a fashion perspective for our reader is the fit and the color and how it's gonna flatter her body. So that's our cultural angle into a fashion story. And I think that 
when you're creating content, you have to know who she is first and then create for those specific needs. Not just assume that she is one way, that she you know, loves heels, like, okay, that's a great Latina stereotype. But you can't just start there. You have to research the, you know, who you're talking to. And we're constantly doing that. We're constantly trying to figure out who she is and then creating the content based on our findings from her, so. And I do apologize. I really know that th this is an amazing panel and they've got a lot of great stuff to share, but we've got less than five minutes left. So with that, if everyone wants to give about a 30 to 45 minute closing thoughts, and you don't have to, you don't have to do this, but if, if you want to tell the audience a little bit about maybe why you care as a person, what, what this is about for you, um, and or where you see Latinas going, so. Um, I, I'll, I'll, I'll start. Um, you know, being a Latina, okay, because I'm, you know, I'm Afro Latina and do this. I, I already struggle with seeing a lot of my rep personal representation. So, so I think for me, it's especially important to kind of understand not just the landscape, but who my brand wants to talk to. Because I think that the reality is, is that you get so caught up in, in trying to deliver a message that you forget that you need to start with the person that has the ability to choose where they want to spend their dollars, where they want to go, who they can invest in, and, and that's where we come in, and that's where I come in to help make that case. So I know that for me personally, I kind of, if I had $5 in my pocket, where would I go if I think about that, whether it's a cup of coffee or whatever, and that helps drive the way that I think about what, what our strategy is going to be when I'm talking to my customer. So if I can take, if I, if I take into myself, where would I spend my money? Would I spend my money with my brand? And that helps inform every single decision I make and hopefully how I continue to work with, with, all, of our, with all of our teams to really drive a communications message home um, that will scratch beyond the surface and scratch beyond a promotional product, really get to the heart of what my customer is really thinking. Morning. I am passionate about this because um, I firmly believe that Latinas, we're going to save America. Um, I say that because we are positioned. <laughs> I, I say that because we're positioned. And one of the questions, Aurelia, that you asked us, uh, all of us, was what does it mean to be a powerful Latina? And I thought about that for a second. I said, huh, powerful Latina. I said, my report's called the Latina Power Shift. What do I think about that word? And what I realized, so much of that word for me, it is really truly about authenticity. Everything that we do about being authentic, it goes against the very grain of who we are, against our instinct, right? We're vulnerable when you're authentic. And what I've realized is that this is absolutely, I love who I am. And I love being able to bring this, not only to change my company, but to change the industry. It's not just about making ourselves visible, but it's about having equal access and equal outcomes for our communities. And I believe that any of the work that all of us here are doing are gonna represent that, whether it's at a company, at a school, economic power, whatever it is, but our kids are gonna benefit from it. So that's why I do it. And if it doesn't work, I also like to wear hoop earrings, which is totally stereotypical. <laughs> <laughs> Lily, you want to yeah, go? I already, I already saw the stop sign, but I'll be very brief. We spent a lot of time here talking about where we fit into the cultural and social context and what the general trends are among Latinas, but I want to remind each of you that you have a choice about who you are and who you become. And you know, as a person who teaches leadership classes, the important thing is to have a clear vision of where you want to go and stick to that unapologetically, and you will get there. Who's going next? I guess I'll go. Okay. Um, agree on all points. I would say that the, as, a, as a closing remark, I think that there, for the future of Latinas, I think that there's gonna be a much bigger emphasis, especially from a content perspective, on teens who are Latinas. I mean, we have all these teen publications that are out there already, like Seventeen and Teen Vogue, and I think that you're gonna start to see a little more of those uh, publications geared toward uh, Latino youth. Um, because that's a very specific um, market within, you know, la Latinos. And I think that, um, you know, one of the things that we're seeing online is that our reader is shifting younger and younger and younger. Um, mm -hmm. So we're concentrating a little bit more on that youth segment. Natalie, let's hear the yeah. final word. Yeah, and I, on, on that note, what it's really important to me is, and I sit on the Latina Advisory Board of Girls Incorporated, is that young Latina youth have a lot of struggles at the moment. We talk a lot about uh, the glass ceiling and about 
leaning in, but there's a lot of young girls that have a lot of struggles, and brands, as marketers, we have an enormous responsibility to help them. Um, uh, you know, that is what, that's why it's really important to me uh, to do what it is that we do every day in terms of creating content for her. Um, and, and just lastly, in terms of the chancleta, if I can, if I can have just that last, for us, um, you know, over the years I've learned that what is important in a chancleta <coughs> is not the chancleta, as a woman wearing it. So, so help thank me thank you. our panelists. Wait, that was it? You're going to thank our panel? Let's thank our panelists. <laughs> <laughs> you can't yeah. Lose you. yeah. Oh, and we have a little gift for you on the way out. Your cha your own chancleta power <laughs> beer <laughs> opener for emergencies. <laughs> no way. No. Look, they're getting rushed. Hey. Yes. I was like, looking at my phone, and there was a quote. Yeah, absolutely. It was such a pleasure. It was nice to meet you. Yeah. It's very good. To